didn't I grow up? You ain't either, Annie. You're gonna stay here and take care of me. I'm going to school when I grow up. But you said we'd be together forever. Forever and ever. I'm going to school when I grow up. I'm working on my sons, boy. Annie! I will not have it. Now, you did not see when that girl after supper tonight went to look for Helen in her room. Captain, you don't understand. The child Parker, he climbed out of the window to escape from her. What kind of teacher is she? I thought I had seen her at her worst this morning, shouting at me, but I come home to find the entire house completely disorganized by her. Yes, Helen will stay one second in the same room, won't come to the dinner table with her, won't let herself be bathed, undressed, or put to sleep, or even by finding now. And the end result is that you have to do more for the child than ever before we hired school services. From the moment she stepped off the train, she's been nothing but a burden, incompetent, impertinent, ineffectual, immodest. She ate with a spoon, Captain. What? Not ineffectual. She's learning her manners, which is more than I can say for you half the time. <laughs> Katie, I did not bring you all the way out here to the garden house to be frivolous. Now, how does Miss Sullivan propose to teach a deaf-blind pupil who won't let her even touch her? Well, I don't know. Well, the fact is, today she scuttled any chance she ever had of getting along with that child. If you can see any point or purpose to her staying out here any longer... Well, what do you wish me to do? I want you to give her notice. Oh, well, I can't. Then if you won't, I must. I, I simply will I not let her run around my mind. Miss Sullivan. Captain Keller. <laughs> Riley said I... Well, I didn't suppose what we're here in the garden. I thought that we should, perhaps, have a talk. Yes, I. Well, Katie? Oh, no, you go right ahead, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to uh, make my position clear to Kate in private. I have decided that I am dissatisfied. In fact, deeply dissatisfied in the manner in which you... Excuse me. Is this little house ever in use? in the hunting season. Now, if I could have your attention, Miss Sullivan, I have tried to make allowances for you because you come from a part of the country where people are, well, women, I should say, come from who, well, for whom allowances should be made. I have decided, nevertheless, to... Miss Sullivan, I find it very difficult to talk through those glasses. Oh, of course. Why do you wear them? The sun has been down for an hour. Any kind of light hurts my eyes. Oh. Put them on, Miss Anne. I have decided to give you another chance. For the what? To oh. remain in our employ. Remain in But under two employed. conditions. I am not accustomed to rudeness in servants or women. And that is the first. If you are to say there must be a radical change of manner. Who's? Yours, young lady, is it obvious? <laughs> and the second is that you convince me that there's the slightest hope of your teaching a child who flees from you now like the plague to anyone else she can find in this house. Her isn't. What, Miss Annie? It's hopeless here. Oh, I can't teach a child who runs away. Then do you oh, propose to resign? Well, if we all agree that it's hopeless. Well, Miss Annie, I should not agree. I think perhaps you would. You underestimate Helen. I think that everyone else here does. Oh, but she learns. She learns. Do you know she began talking when she was only six months old? She could say water. Well, almost. Wawa. Wawa, but she meant water. And she knew what it meant. And only six months old. Why, I never saw a child more. <laughs> More well, bright or outgoing? It's still in her somewhere, Miss Annie, isn't it? You should have seen her before her illness. Such a good tempered child. Oh. oh, she's changed. Miss Annie, put up with it. And with us. Us? Oh, please. Like the lost lamb in the parable, I love her all the more. Mrs. Keller. I don't think that Helen's worst handicap is deafness or blindness. I think 
that it's your love oh, and pity. Well, now, what is that? All of you here feel so sorry for her. You've kept her like a pet. Why, even a dog, your housebreak. It's no wonder she won't let me come near her. It's useless for me to try and teach her language or anything else here. I might as well. Before you came, we spoke of putting her in the asylum. What kind of an asylum? For mental defectives. Yes, I visited there. But I can't tell you what I saw. People like, like animals with rats in the halls. And now, what else are we supposed to do if you give up, Miss Annie? Give up? You said it was hopeless. Here. Oh, Mrs. Kenner. I only today saw what has to be done. To begin. I want complete charge of her. Now, you already have that. No, I mean day and night. She has to be dependent on me. For what? Everything. The food she eats, the clothes she wears, fresh air. Yes, the very air that she breathes. Anything her body needs is a primer of sorts to teach her out of. And the one who lets her have it should be her teacher. Oh, not anyone who loves her. You have so many feelings, they fall over each other like feet. You won't use your chances and you won't let me. Look, if she runs from you to us, then I yes, don't see well, that's exactly the problem, you see. I'll have to live with her somewhere else. What? Until she learns to depend on and listen to me. For how long? Why, as long as it takes. Oh, Mrs. Keller. I've packed half my things already. Miss Sullivan! Captain Keller means both of your conditions. It's the only way I can get back in touch with heaven. And I don't see how I can be rude to you again if you're not around to interfere with me and my teaching. And what is your intention if I say no? Pack the other half for home? And abandon Helen to, to this... To the asylum. I grew up in such an asylum. Oh, the state almshouse. Rats. You don't worry about rats, why? My brother Jimmy and I, we used to play with our rats because oh. we didn't have toys. Perhaps you'd like to know what Helen will find there. Not on visiting days. So please. One so arms, one of the old women, crippled, blind, most of them dying. But even if what they had was catching, there was nowhere else to move them. And that's where they put us. The room that Jimmy and I used to play in was the dead house, oh. where they would keep the bodies until they were dead. Your graves. No, I know what you're thinking, but it may be strong. However, I don't think you need to send Helen there. She's strong enough. I have no other conditions. Miss Annie? Yes. Where would you take Helen? Oh, I don't know, perhaps. Italy? Oh, I'm afraid not. Oh. Well, I suppose I can't have everything. How would this here garden house do? Oh, furnish it. Bring Helen here after a long ride so she won't recognize it. And you can see her every day, if she doesn't know. When? When is that all? Oh, that's all. With your permission, dear. <coughs> I will give you two weeks in this place. Just two weeks. And it'd be a miracle if you can get the child to tolerate you. Two weeks? Miss Annie, can you accomplish anything in two weeks? Anything or not. Two weeks and the child comes back to us. Make up your mind, Miss Annie, yes or no. Two weeks? For only one miracle. I'll get her to tolerate. Thank you.